semi-state championship is brought to you live from Holman Center in Terre Haute by your station for IHSAA Action, WFIE-TV Channel 14. Tonight's exclusive coverage is brought to you in part by Holland Dairy, Kenny Kent, St. Mary's Medical Center, your Coca-Cola General Bottlers, by Whirlpool Employees Federal Credit Union, Warwick Federal Credit Union, Evansville Teachers Federal Credit Union, and by Hardee's and Gelhausen Paint Decorating and Craft Center. Now, live from courtside, here's Channel 14 Sports Director Mike Blake and color commentator Wayne Boldinghouse. And a very pleasant good evening, everybody. We're just one step away from Market Square and the Final Four. Tonight, in just a couple of hours, we'll know who'll represent Southern Indiana in Hoosier Hysteria, the ultimate, the Final Four in Indianapolis. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Blake, along with Wayne Boldinghouse. Who's it going to be? A team memorial, which has already gone farther than any team in that school's history, or will it be the defending semi-state champion, Southridge Raiders? Boulder, we've got a classic. It's a great matchup, Mike. It's going to be a dream come true for one of these teams and probably a nightmare, to, at least tonight, for the other one. But uh, in the South Ridge, we got an experienced team with a lot of fine athletes. With Memorial, we got an upstart program uh, with a lot of underclassmen. They are in a similar situation that South Ridge was a year ago. I look for an exciting basketball game. Some of the important things, Memorial has to come out to a good start, contrary to this morning, correct? Well, I think uh, they have to get off to a good start. I think Southridge needs to get off to a good start. Uh, you know, Southridge got off to such an excellent start uh, the first uh, two quarters today, then they kind of died the last uh, uh, 16 minutes. Memorial got great support off the bench uh, this morning, and uh, if they're going to play Southridge even up and win the basketball game, they've got to get support from the bench again. Absolutely. Some of the key people. Ted O'Brien, what a tremendous performance for the South Ridge Raiders. He had a career-high 27 points. He had 22 in the first half. Also, Albert Durkholz off the bench for Memorial, and then Brian Clements came to life in the second half. Right now, we want to introduce one of our many special guests for tonight, the fine head coach at Indiana State University. This is Ron Green. Ron, welcome. This, uh, how would you like to take about eight of these guys uh, to, to Indiana State next week? Well, then maybe it wouldn't take me so long to see if we can get this train back on the track, but uh, glad to be with you, Mike. Let me, you saw the games this afternoon. What impressed you about the opening round action? Well, I think the big thing is the intensity level that the coaches have got their players playing. They're playing very hard. I think they're playing pretty intelligently at this time of the year, which is something, of course, that uh, you would want. I couldn't help but over here you talk a little bit about getting to Market Square, you know, and getting to the Final Four and reminiscing just a second back uh, to 1956 and 57 when I had the opportunity to play on a team to get there in the final Final Four. And it's just like the NCAA, it's not maybe winning that thing that I know that's important, but if you can get to that Final Four, you've got it, quite an accomplishment. Absolutely. Ryan, you've been to arenas all over the country. What is unique about the Holman Center, particularly for high school age athletes? But I think not only for high school uh, age athletes, but I think the sight line is so terrific. I think you guys have got great seats. I don't think there's a bad seat in the house. We think we're very proud of it. We think it's one of the finest places to watch a game in the United States. As far as the floor and things like that, uh, it's not going to cause any problems? I don't think so. It's a charged floor, and I, I, you know, I think it's proved to be uh, a good floor, and I don't think it'll cause anybody any problems. A lot of kids are still playing on wood, but it's a very good floor and a very good facility. I know that the kids have to be excited to get to come in here and play. Uh, it's just a great place to play, great enthusiasm. We're just glad to be here and be able to host it. We are also. Ron Green, thank you. Best of luck at ISU. We're coming back. We've got, we're going to see how these two teams, Wayne, we're going to take a look at how Memorial and Southridge have arrived at tonight's final game. Don't go away. It's all coming up right after this.
the Hoosier hysteria starts to rev up. Let's take a look at how the Memorial Tigers arrived at this championship game. Again, a 61 to 48 win over the Bloomfield Cardinals, handling the Cardinals only their third loss of the season. In the early going, Memorial in white got it inside to Cameron Forbes, but the Tigers still trail 12 to 6 at the end of the first period. Shane Barrett has to hit from outside, as do all the Tigers. Barrett puts it in. He had, in addition to six points, three rebounds. One of the key players, Albert Durkholz. He had some outstanding performances, had 10 rebounds and three baskets coming off the bench. Watch it again. A very good athlete. Durkholz spelling relief for Brian Clements, who spent much of the first half in foul trouble. Now another key to Memorial succeeding has to be the outside shooting of Pat McMillan. McMillan at the top of your picture, here he is, made one critical shot in the first half, which gave Memorial a 35 to 33 lead. Chris Langley played well offensively, but what he did defensively is what really stole the show. He set a tournament record six steals for the Memorial Tigers. Kevin Langley, his brother here in the second half. Kevin, big shot as Memorial started to pull away at the end of the third quarter. But the main story, Boulder had to be Brian Clements. He really came to life. He really did. He had a tremendous second half. All 21 of his points were scored in the second half, and Memorial needed him. Uh, he, he was the difference in the basketball game. The bench kept him in, in the game the first half. Brian Clements won it in the second. What do you think happened to Brian Clements? Uh, what, what turned him around as we watch another play? Well, I think he probably had, early in the first half, a little tournament jitters, got into foul trouble, had a chance to sit on the bench, uh, collect himself, analyze the play, and then got himself really involved in the second half. Watch this reaction of Shane Barrett. After believing he felt that he got tackled, Shane goes, ref, come on. And he says, oh, no. <laughs> they called a foul. Memorial, though, again, won it underneath. Brian Clements, the story. And he did get a little help. Watch this shot. This isn't in the textbook. He'll take it coming up here in a moment. He loses control of it on its way up. But when things are going good, they're going good. Good second effort. And then he gets a little break on a slip shot. Watch this. Bottom of the net. It's in there. 61 to 48. Now in the second game, of course, Southridge. Open. Just looked like they were going to blow the doors off of Floyd Central. Open it up to 21 points. But, boy, they had to hang on at the final outcome, didn't they? Well, they did. Uh, the first half was an, uh, really a highlight film for uh, Ted O'Brien. Just a magnificent first half. 22 points. And here you see some of his production in the first half. Ted O'Brien, 27 points, 6 rebounds. Young man with a very good touch from 10 to 15 feet. He is the leading shooter on the team in field goal percentage. The Pat Birds, Rick and Ron, feeding them at will. And O'Brien conducted a clinic. You'll also see some very good defense. Now Southridge, very well coached, five talented athletes. They're also very good off the court academically. Here's Rick Patberg, Yoakum, Todd Yoakum got the steal, got it up to Rick Yoakum. And as I mentioned, it opened it up 48 to 27 in the third period. Going across court again, good ball movement. O'Brien again off the window. Another key player that you and I both like is Ron Steinhardt, number 32, we'll be watching him. He does it all, and kind of the unsung hero, isn't he? Well, he really is. Uh, he's a southpaw, but he does every phase of the game well. He's the Raiders' leading rebounder. He's the third uh, leading scorer. Uh, he does a lot of things that are not reflected in a statistics column. He's got to be a coach's dream. He sure does. Again, we're delighted to be with you. We're glad you're here, Tri-State. It is a great night at the Holman Center as the Memorial Tigers, seeking their first semi-state championship ever, taking on... The Red, the Raiders from Southridge. The, the communities of Huntingburg and Holland are well represented. It looks like Hawaii night in the memorial section. Tremendous crowds as well it should be. As Ron Green said, just to get this far is a tremendous accomplishment. Well, it's, it's a wonderful, uh, uh, I think, compliment to these programs. Once again, we're delighted to turn over the introduction of the starting lineups to the public address announcer here at the Holman Center, Steve Smith. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Holman Center for the championship ball game of the 1986 Terre Haute Semi-State. Let's meet the starting lineups. First, for the Evansville Memorial Tigers.
at a guard, a 5'8 junior, number 11, Shane Barrett. At the other guard for the Tigers, a 5'9 senior, number 33, Kevin Langley. At center for Memorial, a 6'4 junior, number 55, Cameron Forbes. At forward, a 6'1 senior, number 41, Tim Behan. And at the other forward, a 6'4 junior, number 45, Brian Clements. The head coach of the Tigers, Rich Resimus. And now the starting five for the Southridge Raiders. At guard, a six-foot senior, number 10, Rick Patberg. At the other guard position, a six-foot senior, number 20, Ron Patberg. At center, a 6'5 junior, number 50, Ted O'Brien. At forward, a 6'2 senior, number 40, Todd Yoakum. And at the other forward, a 6'3 senior, number 32, Ron Steinhardt. The head coach of the Southridge Raiders, Gary Duncan. Thank you again, Steve Smith. We are ready to go. Again, you have to salute all these, all factions of these two schools. They're the referees. The balding gentleman, Mike Bohan from the MCC. You've seen him at Robert Stadium on many occasions. And your second official, Mike, is Roger DeYoung. He officiates in uh, the IHSAA Conference, but also in the Conference, the Great Lakes Valley Conference that the USI Eagles play in. We started to say we have to salute the schools again. Rich Pasimus and also Gary Duncan coming to congratulate one another. They've got, like any good organization, they're good from the top to the bottom. They've got good people helping them in all facets of athletics. Great staff, uh, great support from their booster club, and of course, fine student athletes on the court. I've said on a couple occasions, so and so's a good kid, isn't he? And they say, hey, you don't get to this level without good kids. Well, here are two of the best teams in the state of Indiana, two of the top eight. One of these teams will be going to Market Square very shortly. Cameron Forbes going against Ted O'Brien. We're underway, and Memorial has the tip. Memorial starting out slowly this morning, as did Southridge, but Southridge recovered quickly and opened up a commanding lead in the first half. Memorial was fortunate to lead at the intermission. It looks like Southridge is going to suck their defense way back in and force Memorial to take some shots from the outside. Again, they seem to allow Tim Bamey, as teams have throughout the tournament, that 15-footer Shane Barrett driving. And going up to get the rebound is Rick Pepper. His brother Ron leads the team in rebounding in the tournament, but it was Rick with the first carom today. Todd Yoakum banning it out. Unbelievably, earlier today, the Papbergs committed seven turnovers between them. They hadn't had that between them in the entire regional, so it's really rare. Steinhardt decides to fan it back out. Very good patience on the part of the Raiders. We're going to see some excellent matchups defensively. You've got some very good athletes on both teams. Shane Barrett, lucky he did not commit a foul. And Rick Tapper draws the first blood. Two to nothing, Southridge. Got to keep reminding everybody that Southridge played in game two this morning, so they did not have as much rest as the Memorial Tigers. 
But as they say, you have to suck it up, and that's what they tell these kids. There's no tomorrow for the team that comes out on the short end. Cameron Forbes loses it. And the Raiders will bring it down. Very good hustle by the Raiders. I look for Pat McMillan to make an early entry into this basketball game because they're going to need his outside shooting. Memorial in a very tenacious man to man. Ted O'Brien, who conducted a clinic in the first game this morning, does not get the ball, but it goes down to Ron Patberg, and it's 4 0. That's something they're, the Raiders are good at. They get the ball to the open man. Clements draws a lot of crowd. Langley with a rebound and a foul underneath. Foul on Todd Yoakum, number 40. Mike Bohan with the signal. Memorial still trying to get on the board as Kevin Langley goes to the line. Kevin averages 3.1 points per game. Shares time a little bit with his brother, Chris. He's shooting 64% from the strike. puts it in. Again, Memorial coming in with a record of 20 and 6. Southridge, 23 and 4. Bamey, good position, and the putback. Tim Bamey gives Memorial to back within one. It's 4 to 3. Nice pass underneath to Pat Bird. Ron Patford wanted the foul, no whistle. Barrett over to Cameron Forbes, loses it. Langley with the save, an oh. incredible save by Kevin Langley. Super athletic ability. But Bamey throws it away. Both teams a little tight. Yes, they are. This game is so meaningful, you can expect it. Yoakum wanting to go under. O'Brien loses it. It'll be retained by the Raiders. Okay, growing up in Indiana, I can attest, this is a lifelong dream for these young men. Southridge has been there. As juniors, they went to the Final Four. There was a lot of pressure on them to repeat. The fact that they've come this far is truly a testament to the outstanding year that they've had. And Rick Tapper does not get the roll. Cameron Forbes for the rebound. Up in a hurry to Kevin Langley. Into the paint. And he travels. Ryan Clemens travels with the ball. It'll go back to, uh, to uh, Southbridge. That's one of the problems with this tartan turf that they're playing on here. It grabs the tennis shoes so much more than it would does. I think that's the problem right there that Ryan Clemens experienced. Roughly four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter of play. Still a 4-3 Southbridge lead. O'Brien, and the rebound by Kevin Langley. He goes right up the middle and gets a foul on Rick Tapper. Kevin Langley, a very fine football talent, took it right up the gut and draws the foul. That's the second team foul. And the Tigers will set it up again with a chance to take their first lead. They trail 4-0. It's 4-3. Bamey. Three-second violation on Cameron Forbes, and he says, I know it. It was interesting to note that Rich, Rich, Rich Racine has said, I haven't, I, I'm not yelling at him during the tournament. He said in the sectional, he said the staff, they're backing off. You know, they're trying a more, hey, we're here, you know what you're supposed to do, and apparently, obviously, it's worked. Well, it has worked, but uh, after uh, 20 regular season games, you know, they knew what was expected of them. Like so many good teams, they didn't settle on a starting lineup till right at the end of the regular season. But Mar Memorial has clicked with the starting lineup that is on the court right now. Memorial doing a good job adjusting to a lot of movement by this afternoon's uh, Raiders. Ron Steiner, good move with the tip and Ted O'Brien with the basket. Memorial had a hand in the net but the ball fell through anyhow. Credit Ted O'Brien with his first basket and it's a 6-3 Southridge lead. Shane Barrett pants it out. Bamey 
short. Cameron Forbes, big rebound, and the basket. Forbes in the right spot. And it's now six to five. Clements on Steinhardt. Steinhardt had eight points and seven rebounds in the win this afternoon. But Gary Duncan believes he's his best defensive player. Shane Barrett, who seems to never run out of gas, covering Rick Patbird. Yoka. He too stumbles. It goes off of Shane Barrett. It'll go back to Southridge. I see what you mean about this turf. There again, he had trouble keeping his footing. Yes, it, it just seems like the, on the basketball shoe, it, it just uh, you're, you come to an abrupt halt a lot quicker. Oddly enough, Southridge practice at a Heritage Hill this week who has this type of surface. And Ryan Steinhardt, Steinhardt from way outside. Puts the Raiders back up by three. Ryan Clements. He is still looking for his first offering. Cameron Forbes takes it down. And a rebound by Todd Yoko. Southridge really helped uh, on defense. Everybody sees the basketball. Steiner now again. Can't get it out. Both teams playing some good D. Down to Yoka under the paint and in. Great shot by Todd Yoka. Oh, he's such a fine athlete. One of the finest athletes in Southern Indiana. And it's a five point Southridge lead. 10 to 5 and a foul. Here come some fresh troops from Memorial. Chris Langley in for Kevin Langley. And Pat McMillan coming in for Cameron Fords. The foul is on Rick Tapper, his second. As you look at Chris Langley, a record-setting performance earlier. Yes, uh, Chris had six steals uh, in the uh, morning contest. That's the most in a semi-state, Terre Haute semi-state game in one game. 153 to go in the quarter. Memorial down by five. Clements. And Brian Clements gets his first basket. Rich Racima shouting some defensive instructions. Bird fills it and a whistle. An official's timeout. Mike Boyan is coming up to talk to Ron Patbird. Right, he, he's limping a little bit. I think he stubbed his toe on this surface and uh, I think he's going to be able to walk it off. But give Rick Patbird number 10 the basket and here comes Andy Noss, number 52. The big guy. 6'9, a senior. Andy played well this afternoon, picked up eight points, six rebounds. 121 to go. Memorial trying to get back within three. They trail 12-7. Chris Langley wants to shoot it, but decides to go back outside. Down to a minute. First quarter, the semi-state championship at Terre Haute. Trouble handling it. Double dribble. And it'll go back to the Raiders. We talked about this earlier, Wayne, off the air. Memorial cannot afford to let this team get too far ahead. No, Southridge is too fine a basketball team to jump off in front of somebody. They proved that in the afternoon contest. We're down to 38 seconds. Nice pass into O'Brien. And a rebound by Brian Clements. Memorial in a hurry, under 30 seconds. Shane Barrett gets the shot and puts it in. He always seems to come up with a big basket. That was one of them there. All five of Memorial starters have at least one point. It's 12-9, 15 seconds to go. And a foul on Shane Barrett. It'll be Memorial's ball, or uh, Southridge ball. Shane got caught in the mismatch in, and uh, they were trying to post uh, Todd Yoakum down there, but uh, Shane fouled him. Yoakum will inbound the ball right in front of the Memorial bench. Down to 11 seconds. Steinhardt. 
good move. Ron Pepper down to two seconds. Barrett has to throw it up. That's it. He does not get it off. We're coming back. That's the end of the first quarter. Southridge on top, 14 to 9. As we begin the second quarter, a glaring statistic, Wayne Boldinghouse. Yes, Memorial, five turnovers in the first eight minutes. Southridge, none. Southridge with the basketball and a 14 to 9 advantage. Shane Barrett working on Ron Patberg. A foul on Andy Noss. This time, Brian Clements does not commit the foul. It is on Andy Noss. His first. Fourth team foul for Southridge. Memorial was four out of eight in the first quarter for 50%. Southridge, seven out of 13 for 538 percentage. I noticed that in most of the games, Memorial likes to really spread them out. Why is that? As McMillan fires. They seem, in other words, their offense seems to be spread out rather than coming in for the tight shot. Is there a reason? Well, it, it's uh, Southridge's defense is playing the passing lanes. In order to do that, you've got to spread their defense if you're going to pass around the perimeter. Andy Noss, air ball, but the Patberg run is there, and a foul on Pat McMillan. Ron Patberg with his third basket. Pat McMillan with his first foul. Here's another look. Johnny on the spot. That's not coaching there. That's just good athletic instincts. Ron Tapper, the leading rebounder in the regional, had seven turnovers the, this afternoon. Quite rare, but he had 12 points, six assists. He's already got six points tonight. 16 to nine as Memorial has its work cut out, bringing it across. The ball, Clements thought it was not intended for him. And Chris Langley cannot control it, and it's another turnover for Memorial. I look for more for Memorial to take a timeout here if they don't get themselves uh, righted a little bit. The Raiders with a 69-57 win over Floyd Central. Memorial a 61-48 win over Bloomfield. And Andy Noss puts it in. Southridge spreading it out. Their top six players have all scored. Andy Eight. Noss, as he did a year ago in tournament play, is having another fine tournament. Albert Dirkholz, who has checked in for Memorial. He's number 53. Here's McMillan. And the Tigers are having trouble hitting the basket as the Raiders bring it across. Yoakum. O'Brien. And a foul on Andy Knox. That's his second. He's becoming much more active, Wayne Boldinghouse. Yes, he is, and uh, that'll put uh, Memorial on the free throw line, and they need to get into position where they can score, score some points because Southridge is in control of this basketball game. So Albert Durkholz goes to the line at the sixth ball mark. He's an 80% free throw shooter. Albert with a good performance this afternoon. Was a real gorilla on the on the backboards. Puts in his first point of the night. Very steady, very unselfish player, and is believed to be the best free throw shooter shooter on the squad. And Memorial gets into double digits finally, 18 to 11. McMillan working, and Steinhardt cannot control it. This is Chris Langley up and in. Fine move by Chris Langley. And now it's a five-point ball game with six minutes remaining in the first half. Somebody asked, can you change shoes? Is there a different type of shoe to wear? No, not so, right? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, there's an easy one for Noss. Andy Noss with his second basket, and it's 20 to 13. Two real good uh, points there. One was the passing on the perimeter by Southridge. The other was the positioning by Andy Noss. Five and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. Chris Langley got O'Brien out of position, but the ball is short, and Ron Patberg has the rebound. 
Cameron Forbes about ready to check in. Ted O'Brien hitting, hitting the turf. Danas. This is Yoakum. That's a double clutch it. And Brian Clements with a big rebound. That was an excellent rebound. Up in a hurry to Chris Langley. Good defense by the Raiders. Barrett will put it up. Shane Barrett with his fourth point. 4.30 to go in the second quarter, and it's 2015 Southridge. Kevin Langley about to check back in. You'll see him in a moment. Ron Pepper, nice move. Gets it back out to Steiner. They'll start it over. They really don't panic. They really no, they, they move got, the ball well. They've got tremendous team poise, and each one of them knows the roll. Three-second violation on O'Brien. Memorial substituting. Dirk Holtz and Barrett will come out. Kevin Langley and Forbes come in. That was turnover number one for Southridge. They just played an excellent floor game up until now. Four minutes, 12 seconds. Ron Patrick's going to take a blow. Rick Patrick, number 10, is in for Southridge. Mike Blake along with Wayne Boldinghouse. Happy to be with you live from the Holman Center. The finals of the Terre Haute Semi-State. One of these teams will be one of four remaining in the 1986 Boys Tournament. And Cameron Forbes on the turnaround. He really can go from hot to cold. Yes, he can. If he, if he hits that to rhythm, I'll tell you, he can uh, score six or eight points in a quarter. They leave Rick Papford open, and he puts it in. They had a defensive mix-up, and sometimes when you substitute a lot, you get that in a basketball game. Rick Papford averaging 12 points a game. He has half his total already. 3.33 to go in the second quarter. A five-point lead. Southridge Memorial with the ball. Brian Clements on the fadeaway. Cameron Forbes, good position. And a rebound by Ted O'Brien. They seem to be letting him play a little more than this afternoon. Yes, I think it's a much more physical game. They're not calling uh, the touch foul. That should be in Memorial's favor. Steinhardt and a foul after the shot. Ron Steinhardt took it to the hole with authority but committed the foul. That's his first personal. And Cameron Forbes will go to the free throw line. Let's take a lovely look. There's your shot. Forbes up strong for the board. Yes, Steinhardt was on the arm. Forbes goes to the line where he is shooting 73%. Another substitute, Tim Bamey, comes in for Pat McMillan. They called him Beheim before the game. Just like this morning, we, it, it was Rich Rizimus, but he got that right tonight. Cameron Forbes can't get it. Back up with a shot. Clements with a rebound. Forbes, and he's got it. 22-19. It's a three-point ball game. Bamey working on Steinhardt. Rick Patberg putting on an excellent show. Rick now with eight points. And it's 2.44 to go in the second quarter. The Rick and Ron show. A missed shot by Kevin Langley. Ryan Clements loses it. It goes off of Memorial. It'll be Southridge's ball. Memorial has missed a lot of what I call power moves, the close-in shots. But let's give credit to the long arms of Andy Noss and Tate O'Brien. Under two and a half minutes, 2.28. Chris Langley trying to keep the clamps on a red-hot Rick Pepper. He wants that basketball. Here he is. Gary Duncan says it's like having three or four coaches. All these guys are very heavy. Ted O'Brien on the turnaround. Kevin Langley with a rebound. Up to Chris Langley. He'll take it all the way. Clements with the follow-up. Give Chris Langley an 8.6 in his floor X routine as he does a somersault, but it's Brian Clements with the follow-up. 145 on a strong move. Oh, I tell you, there's bodies flying all over the place. 
26-21. Kevin Langley looking for help. This is Jamie. Down to a minute 25. Memorial trying to keep again within three. Langley almost loses it. Chris Langley. Kevin Langley gets into a tough situation. This is Tim Bamey. You know, the question, some people say, why doesn't Bamey shoot more? He's got a good shot. Well, he probably doesn't have the confidence he needs in his shot all the time. And he knows his role. 26-23, under a minute. Southridge with the lead and the ball. Steinhardt, great drive. Cameron Forbes takes a tumble, but the Memorial keeps the basketball. 45 seconds. Rich Racimus holds up one finger. He says, let's try one more, guys. As promised, a classic here at the Hummett Center. Memorial trailed at half this morning. They will be content to be within one point here at halftime if they can get it into the hall. The Southridge Raiders, the defending semi-state champions, Leading 26-23, 17 seconds remaining. I, I see some Southridge players with their hands on their knees and hands on their hips, and they may be getting a little bit fatigued. Down to eight seconds. They better hurry. Kicked by Ron Steinhardt. It'll be Memorial Fall. What is the what is the time to really put it in motion as we get to this up? Usually around nine or ten seconds. You'd like to shoot the ball maybe with uh, three or four seconds left on the clock. That way, if you do have a miss, you got a chance to tip it in. So you've got two of your better guns. McMillan, a real sharpshooter. He'll take it in. No, he won't. That makes a little more sense. Scheidlin will bring it in. Well, I think Shane, Shane Barrett is also in. Right. There's two good moves here. One, number one, you put a shooter in the game, plus there's a shot. Underneath, Ryan Clements with a big basket, and it's a one-point ball game at the half. We're coming back. Southridge, 26. Move to his left, to his weak hand, great body control, draws the foul, and makes the shot. They call the foul on Ryan Clements, number 45. That's his first personal. He had three personals in the first quarter this morning. David Scheitman coming in for Tim Bamey. 2.51 on the clock, and we're all knotted up at 35 all in the third period. Again, I'd like to uh, emphasize the team poise that Southridge seems to possess. They, they just seem to be unflappable out there. A great many of the Bloomfield and Floyd County, Floyd Central fans stayed here. And Ron Patberg puts the Raiders back up on top. That's his first free throw to go along with five field goals. You're watching IHSAA semi-state action at its best on the sports leader in the tri-state WFIE TV, Channel 14, Evansville. Cameron Ford. Big move. Good, strong move right down the lane. And it's 37-36 Memorial. Forbes playing very well in this second half. Pat McMillan talking to the bench. He has a big assignment. Steinhardt feeding to Ron Tapper, the block by Clements. Big block. Barrett looking for some help. Two oh eight in the third quarter. McMillan puts it up. Brian Clements is there. Big strong rebound by Clements. You mentioned it earlier. Even though McMillan has had anything but a hot tournament, he keeps shooting. Yes, he does. He's a shooter and he knows it. Sooner or later, one of those shots is going to drop. Memorial with its biggest lead in a long time, 39-36. 1.44 remaining in the third period. And a foul on David Scheitlin. Scheitlin working on Todd Yoakum. That's Rick Patford coming over. Memorial with only... Scheidlin's only his first foul. Ron Steinhardt will take a much-deserved rest. And Ron Patberg will go to the line. Kevin Langley up off the bench for Memorial. Number 33 in white about to come in. Shane Barrett will take a rest. 
as I look for uh, Coach Zemus to sit Shane down the remainder of this quarter. He gets the benefit of the 60 seconds during the quarter break, bringing him back for that fourth quarter. Did you have any certain keys to, for substituting in terms of rust? Obviously, when a guy's dragging, but uh, were there other times when you said, hey, let's get him out of there? Well, foul trouble, but I, I, I wanted to define roles so a player would know approximately how long he was going to be playing in a game. That way, a sub knew when he was coming into a game. So Memorial now will try to go up by five. 125 to go in the third quarter. 39-36 Tigers. They're trying to do what no other Memorial School has ever done. Win a semi-state. Offensive foul, or a defensive foul on Andy Knox. That's Andy's third. It has been an incredible year for the Memorial Tigers. I don't think I don't think Memorial's in the bonus yet. And that's right. Mr. DeYoung coming over. There is 118 on the clock. 39-36 is the score. It'll be He says now they are correct. Rich Racimus, Randy Huffer on his side. There's David Hayden showing. That's four. The Memorial will inbound it. 117 to go. 39-36. Clements in a lot of traffic. Offensive foul. And I think that was a good call. He just tried to force himself through good defense by the Raiders. That's Clements' second personal. We're going to watch it again. See, they collapse on him. Yes, yes. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go, and now the Raiders back live. Two young men that take care of that basketball, the Patbergs, but they have got to be two tired athletes. They have been working hard. Hillsmeyer blocked by Clements. Another big block by Brian Clements. Scheitlin up in a hurry to McMillan, and he travels. There again, Mike, I think it was a floor. I think on a wood floor, his feet would have slid four or five inches. There would have been no travel call, but he, his shoes caught. He had to take that extra little hop to catch his balance. Forty-five seconds. Rick Patford, strong move in the basket. Boy, he is quick. Yes, he is quick, and he's very knowledgeable. Uh, just that coach on the floor. So the twins, Rick and Ron, five baskets apiece. But Ron has one extra free throw. 31 seconds, 39, 38, Memorial with a point and the basketball. Yes, uh, Memorial's going to crank this clock right down to zero. Down to 20. 15. 11. Now they'll start into something. McMillan. Bingo from the side. Two, one. Patberg with an extra effort. No good. And that's the end of three. One quarter remaining. It's Memorial 41, Southridge 38. Eight minutes. What an outstanding ball game. The Raiders will inbound it. They trail 41 to 38. Look at this crowd, they're going bananas, and you can be sure they're not going to rest for the next eight minutes. We'll pass along a couple of scores. Also some key statistics here. Mike Hillsmeyer. It all comes down to these final seven and a half minutes. And Ron Steiner, as he's done so often, Steinhardt with a big basket. We hadn't heard from him for a while. It was about time. 41-40 Memorial. It may come down to Mike. Who is going to be the best free throw shooting team in the final five minutes of this basketball game? Bryant. That's McMillan. Again, he has had only one basket, but it was a big one at the end of the quarter. Now, the Raiders sense that they can regain the lead. 
I'll tell you this, the Southridge section has been standing much of this ball game. And likewise for the Tigers, I'll tell you, they're both right behind us, and I'll tell you, I can feel the emotions of this crowd. Seven minutes remaining, 41-40. Pat Bird underneath decides to bring it back out to his brother. Just very good patience. This is a good basketball team. Two good basketball teams. Again, they tried to find, they had Ron open, but it's stolen by Brian Clements. Clements with some very big defensive play. Yes, he had a couple of fine steals and a couple of big blocks. Clements now will take it to the hole, and it's a foul underneath on Ron Steinhardt. It'll be a two-shot foul. Clements has 10 points as we get another look. Yes, he got that baseline opening, and all they can do is foul it from behind. Shane Barrett comes over to get some instructions. Dave Hayden, who works for the out with the backcourt people. Clements does not convert. It remains 41-40. Halftime, Mike Shelbyville leads Warren Central 35-26. Uh, Gary Wallace leads Anderson 39-28. Michigan City Rogers 45-35 over Marion. And it's a two-point Memorial lead. Clements with 11, 42-40. 6-22 remaining. Don't forget, you'll see the entire Final Four next Saturday on 14. A foul on Shane Barrett, I think. No, no. On Cameron Ford. On Cameron Ford. That'll be at 9.30 a.m. the state finals next Saturday. Cameron Ford with his first personal. And Ted O'Brien comes to the line. Forbes goes high off the floor to get the rebound. O'Brien has two points in this contest. 6-0-4 remaining. Don't forget, Mark Howard will bring you all the scores tonight at 10. Brian Clemens on the turnaround. Memorial's big horse for the big basket. 44-40. 545. Pepper pants it out to Rick Pepper. O'Brien, a foul, and it does not go in. The foul on Pat McMillan. That's his second personal, and Ted O'Brien will go back to the line. Mike, a decided day after three quarters. Here we're going to see it again on slow-mo. Good move of Pat O'Brien. And you see the foul across the arm. Memorial has 28 rebounds after three quarters to Southridge's 13. You mentioned you thought that Southridge would have trouble underneath, and apparently they have. Yes, uh, Memorial's uh, got more depth. Of course, I think they got stronger bodies on the inside. Ted O'Brien with a big day. Tremendous ball game earlier, and two critical free throws here. 44-42. The Tigers on top as they bring it down. Barrett loses his footing and loses the basketball. with a sensational move and we're tied five minutes remaining 44 all Clements down low and he answers Memorial countered quickly with two from Brian Clements it's a great basketball game at the Holman Center a trip to the final four four minutes and 45 seconds away for one of these two outstanding teams Yoakum and we're tied again everybody's going all out Shane Barrett brings it across and loses it. 4.30 to go. As you look at the Southridge fans, Todd Yoakum calls timeout. We're coming back. Hang on, 14 country. We're all knotted up.
went through one of the longest fourth quarters, I think, ever this afternoon in that Southridge ball game. 426. You expect this to be a lengthy four four and a half minutes. Well, it's going to be a long four minutes, but it will not be as long as that uh, last four minutes of the Floyd Central uh, Southridge game this afternoon. 424 remaining, 46 all, Southridge with the basketball. 11 to 4 in terms of count turnovers. Memorial with 11. Southridge with a tremendous total of only four. Rick Papper. Big basket. And the Raiders go back on top. It's going to be a test of endurance. Two hard foot games in one day. Down to 345. Chris Langley, great move, but the basket doesn't go. Tremendous offensive effort by Chris Langley. He snaked his way right into the basket for almost a layup and couldn't, couldn't get it to connect. Now they hold up four. Rick Papper down to O'Brien. And Ted O'Brien, silent much of the night, gets a big basket. Apparently, Kevin Langley calls a timeout. Memorial wants to talk it over. And the people from Du Bois County are going bananas. We're coming back 50 to 46, Southridge. The Holman Center is rocking, and for good reason, as Memorial brings it up 50 to 46, they trail. An outstanding high school basketball game, 315 remaining. Big possession right here for Memorial. Again with a big edge and rebounds. Memorial 30 to 15. Langley decides to put it up and puts it in. Chris Langley. It's a two-point ball game. 255. We're under three. Shane Barrett sticking to Rick Patford. Those two guys have really got to be tired. Barrett and Patford. A little cat-mouse game now with Southridge. A little delay game. Eating some time off the clock. Rick Patford, big shot. As he's done so many times. Takes it to the hole. 225, and it's 52 to 48. Clements down under. O'Brien with a rebound. And a foul on Pat McMillan. Wayne, it comes down to making the big play right now, at least in these last two minutes. You've got to give Southridge a tremendous amount of credit. They've answered with some very key plays. Well, they have, and I think they've responded to, to some coaching strategy, the delay game, to open it up for drives to the basket, and, of course, the Pat Burns, they're excellent at that. We're going to keep it here as Rich Racimus wants to talk to the Tigers. Mike Blake along with Wayne Bowlinghouse. Hope you're enjoying it, Tri-State. Hoosier hysteria at its best. The Holman Center, live, the finals of the semi-state. Two teams. One will, of course, advance. One will put the lid on a tremendous year. Both have to be tremendously proud of what they've accomplished. Memorial seeking its 21st win. Southridge trying for its 24th. Again, a little bit later tonight. What a day in the NCAA. Mark Howard will fill you in on what happened not only in the NCAA, but also in other tournament play in high school basketball. OHS, put the, unfortunately, had its season come to an end in overtime. But what a year for Randy Embry and the Red Devils. That's all coming your way. Rick Natter and the news. Mark Howard in the sports tonight at 10. But more importantly right now, 2.18 on the clock. Ted O'Brien going to the line. He will try to add to a 52-48 Southridge advantage. He's a 72% free throw shooter. Southridge is only four out of eight from the free throw line uh, this evening, and they were not a good free throw shooting team this afternoon. But Ted O'Brien has been a good one here in the second half. Three free throws. The 6'5 junior, he's coming back. And he fills it again. Six points. 
Amorio has to hurry. 2.15. They trail by six. Traveling on Shane Barrett. He turned it over. Memorial's going to have to play defense like they've never played it before because Southridge can take care of the basketball. Both teams shooting well. Southridge, 55%. Memorial, 54. Down to two minutes. Southridge trying to get back to Market Square. Down to a minute 45. If I were to foul anybody on the Raiders, I'd have to foul Todd Yoko because he had trouble this afternoon. But he's not going to touch the basketball, Wayne, I don't think, for a while. We're well, down to a minute 35. They may run into him as he steps over a pick. Pat McMillan fouls Ron Steinhardt. McMillan with his, I've got him for four. And it is his fourth personal. Memorial still with a big edge in rebounds. But it's the Raiders with a big edge in points. A minute 34, they lead 54-48. And here goes Steinhardt to the line. Jump ball. And it goes over to Memorial. Tim Bamey with a big effort. Todd Yoakum wanted a foul. Tim Bamey with another big play. The Tigers bring it up with a minute 30 to go. They cannot be too choosy. They got to put it up. McMillan on the turnaround. And a rebound by O'Brien. And a foul on Brian Clements. 120 on the clock. I've got to tip my hat to the Southridge Raiders. Evidently, Coach Jerry Duncan has got to be tremendous physical shape because they have played tremendously hard two games this afternoon. Ron Padford just looked over at the scores table here and said, boy, I'll be glad when this is over. These kids, have, all of them, are absolutely whipped at both ends. Both these teams have given it their all. It has been a great high school basketball game. 112. The Tigers trying to get back. Shane Barrett. A foul on Chris Langley. 107 on the clock. Time running out on what has been a magical year for the Memorial Tigers. 54-48. And Ron Patberg will go to the line. Despite the advantage here, the Memorial cheering section keeps it up, but Ron Patberg answers. His 14th point, he and his brother have 14 apiece, and I say they've done an outstanding job protecting the basketball. Well, they really have, and I'll tell you, Dubois County, get ready. I think you're in for another celebration. McMillan with a rebound, 55-48, a minute five. Chris Langley's got a hurry. He loses it. Ron Pepper to Shane Barrett. Goes out of bounds. It'll go back to the Southridge Raiders. 59 ticks away from a trip to the Final Four. The Raiders look like they're ready to go back. Ron Pepper, two on one, but he'll... McMillan knocks it out. You know, there's a case where one team might have said, okay, got you two on one. Pepper pulled up. They don't need any more points. He, he was smart enough to realize he's got to keep the clock running. Down to 45, and Tim Bamey fouls Ron Steinhardt. Two shot foul. That's Tim Bamey's second personal. Albert Dirkholz, the expression says it all. But the sun is going to come up for these guys and for Memorial tomorrow, Wayne Bowling House. Oh, they've just had a marvelous year. You know, they can, they can brag about this in years to come. And who knows? They may be losing to the state champion. Well, we would hope so. We, I would, think, uh, we certainly do. Southridge, uh, they were there last year. They were an excellent representative for southwestern Indiana. Likewise, they will be again this year. And they are playing like champions in the clutch. The clock finally starts rolling here. 42 seconds. It's a nine-point game. McMillan, Mack. 
Memorial, a never say die season continues. Ted O'Brien to Yoakum, a foul in the basket. Todd Yoakum, as he's done three times in the second half, will go to the line for a three point play. The kid that missed the first nine games has come back, and as was needed, he is here. If they were to go to state again, Yoakum had to be here, and he is here in, in great style this evening. He might be, uh, according to some, 85%, but he looks 100% tonight. Pat McMillan puts the lid on an outstanding career. The 6'3 senior out of Good Shepherd getting a standing ovation as the people from Du Bois County continue to celebrate. Pat McMillan, what a year, and that kid will never forget his ending to the sectional. But tonight, it's another team's night. There are other heroes, and they're wearing the red and black from Southridge. 29 seconds. Steinhardt up to Ron Patber. He blows the bunny. His leg cranked up on him. 60 to 50. It's a 10-point game. Langley. 10 seconds. Bamey with a shot. Market Square. Here they come. The Southridge Raiders have won it again. A tremendous win for Southridge, beating an outstanding Memorial team here tonight. The final score, 60 to 52. We're coming back to recap an outstanding high school game. We'll be right back. something you were down 48 44 what went through your mind at that time i was thinking we've got to play smart and i'm um, getting better shots and play. they're getting a lot of they're really hitting the board hard and getting second shots and everything and um they're really playing great they're really playing tough a lot of people are going to say is this team better than last year now you can answer that question can't you well i think it is right now we've been we're more matured and had the experience and i think we're a little bit better this year I know you want to get to the celebrating. Send some of those other heroes over, will you please? All right. Ron Steinhardt, one of the seniors. Thank you. Boulder, while we wait for others, give us your reaction, if you will. Well, I think, again, uh, Mike, it was the experience of the Southridge Raiders. And uh, I'll tell you, right here is a fine young man. He and his brother just had fabulous careers. Rick, congratulations. I'll tell you, I thought fatigue might get you there in the end, but it turned the other way. You look to have the fresh legs in the end, and the last two or three minutes certainly belong to the Raiders. Yeah, you know, uh, we were down in the sectional. We just uh, felt like uh, we could come back and win it, you know. We uh, did that in the sectional, and, you know, I was in foul trouble, you know, kind of saved my legs. So, uh, you know, and we just uh, kept it going, you know. You certainly did. What was the what, what was the strategy after the ball game? I know the coach and I know the players, you didn't want to come back in that ball game this afternoon. You thought you had a big win, but you had to come back and hang on against Lloyd Central. What did coach tell you between games? He just told us, you know, to go get a rest and, uh, you know, save it up and uh, go get some sleep and we'll come out and uh, do our best tonight. You know, Du Bois County hates to see you two guys leave. What's in the future for the Patbergs? Are you going to go to school together in college? Yeah, we're uh, probably going to go to school and play basketball. We may uh, put baseball on with that. You're pretty good in baseball, too, right? Yes, I am. Let me ask you this. Uh, where, and, you know where you're going to go, Rick? Uh, no, I'm uh, you, Hanover, uh, you call a wall back, probably. Or maybe you in baseball. I don't know yet. Hey, we'd love to have you. Wherever you go, congratulations. You'll be a fine success. Get a piece of that net, if you will. Okay. Good, luck, good luck in Indy. Hey, win this whole thing. Uh, thanks a lot. Rick Patford, another one of the standouts, Todd Yoakum. Todd, as you go back on a year, you've got to be extremely grateful, extremely proud. It, it, it's, been, it's been more than just one night. It's been a year of, of tremendous hardship, but now tremendous success. Yeah, uh, the beginning of the year, I had my leg grow from football, and it was really tough for me to you know, get going again. And all the seniors were talking, and, you know, we didn't want this to be our last game, so we just came out and played as hard as we could, and, you know, it turned out like it did. You seem to have one of your best games tonight, true? Yeah, um, this afternoon I was kind of disappointed in myself because I didn't really play well, and we all got high expectations. 
and at night we said, hey, we got to suck it up and just go out there and do it to it. How did you just, how, what, what did you fear most about Memorial, and how did you, what was the scouting report that you had on them? They were so big. I mean, um, the big black kid and... Uh, Ryan Clemens? Yeah, and Ford. They were rocks. We couldn't, you know, they were really tough inside, and, you know, that's what we had to work on because we're not real big. Young man, you're looking forward to football. Hey, now that, you went, now that you've got a basketball, do you have any second thoughts about basketball? You're going to stick with football, yeah, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll be up here playing next year. Todd, congratulations. Keep it going. Thanks a lot. Another one of the stars. We're going to go to a commercial. Well, wait a minute. Let's get Gary Duncan if we can. Coach, now it can be said, this team is better than last year. You feel somewhat of the monkey off your back. I really do. Uh, I think last year a lot of people thought it was a fluke. You know, winning the way we did, and uh, maybe we had the best draw and everything. Everything was laid out for us last year, but this year we took the hard road, and the kids have arose to every situation we come up against. I asked you this before. You got through a tough sectional, which is always a great sectional for you. When did you realize, hey, this is a better ball club. We're going to do this thing again. Well, you can see it in the regional. It definitely did the fact that we were playing a lot better defense at that point. We were hitting our shots. We started the night a little bit offensively, but... You know, the kids are just, we just get along so well. We're just like a big family. It makes a difference. Gary, one question. Where's the victory cartwheels this year? Hey, <laughs> they're going to happen if, it, if the right thing happens. Okay. You have said this before. These guys, a team like this may never come this way again, true? Well, when you got a school of 509, you get the final four two years in a row. That says enough for it right there. Listen, buddy, congratulations. Stay up there for two games. I hope you're doing the same thing next week for Market Square. Thanks a lot. Gary Duncan, the head coach. Don't go away. There's more. Celebration, Southridge, and a great win and a great memorial effort, 60-52. to 52. We'll be right back. Today's Super Center, Ted O'Brien. Ted, on the morning... Have you ever, did in your wildest dreams ever think you'd have a game like that? Never, never, ever. Everything just seemed to fell today. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Because you had such a great game, did you feel a little extra pressure tonight? Well, I knew that I knew that if it, if it was falling tonight, I'd keep shooting. But, you know, a couple times I missed the little easy, easy bunnies, and I didn't. So I decided just to take the, the better shots. I know that uh, these people here in the red, they got to be awfully proud that you're coming back. What are you going to work on uh, in the off season and also in this next week of practice um this next week of practice i'll probably just work on getting in, getting in good shape well i'm already in good shape but i want to get in better shape because we're going to be running a lot more up there you sure are ted congratulations keep it going thanks a lot ted o'brien ron please come in here our final player to signal the other peppers when i finally after two games i got him memorized ron pepper ron congratulations thanks a lot uh we really pulled this now we're good i mean I can tell you, Coach, we, we played this one for ourselves. Last year we played for the fans. And uh, at halftime we were down, by, uh, we were up for them. And we knew that they came out hard because they played that 10 deep. Absolutely. Yeah. Was there any time in this game when you were extremely worried? Yeah, I'd say at the end of the uh, third, third quarter, we sort of played, uh, we were a little tired. And they were up, I think about five. We were about five. And when, uh, when we came out, you know, we were just played great. You sure did. Your brother says you guys may play baseball in, in college, huh? Yeah, uh, I don't know where we're going to go, but uh, it's either base, Division One baseball or uh, it's either Hanover or all that should be called. Uh, go get them, but more importantly, go get them at Market Square. Thanks, Thanks, Thrill of a lifetime. Congratulations, Ron. One. <laughs> Ron Pepper. We got another Ron. As we said, what a season for the Memorial Tigers. Understandably, Rich Racemus and his team would prefer to be alone at this moment. Here is Ron Wanamuller, who's been through it all, who's been here to the semi-state. Ronnie, even though you didn't come back with a big one, you came back with something that no other team in Memorial history's done. You've got to be proud of these Tigers. Very much so, Mike. It's about as gutty a bunch as we've had around there for a long time. You know, we got down a lot in many of the games, and we fought back, and we had some luck. We won some of the championship games on the last second shot. But, you know, we got ahead tonight, and I thought we might get them, but they have two awfully tough for little guards, boy. They sure do, and they've got a, the whole team is, oh, uh, is, right. is superb. As a former coach, they're a, they're a classic, aren't they not? They are. They've got the size, and they've got the quickness, and the talent. They just got it all. I think we might have a good shot next week. Ron, I know that everybody's going back. Any To the people, the team is coming back tonight, correct? Right. We're coming back after the shower and all. We'll stop and get a bite to eat, but we will be in probably between 11, 11.30 tonight. I know I speak for all the people watching. Uh, congratulations. Bitter defeat, but hey, the sun's coming up tomorrow. 
was a great season, Mike. Oh, my gosh. Season. It certainly was. Yeah. Congratulations, right. and thanks. thanks for all your cooperation. Your Thank stats you, were very good. Okay, thank you. Ron Wanamiller, Wayne, your final thought. Well, I think uh, Memorial should be proud. Uh, they've got a lot of underclassmen in much the same situation situation that Southridge was in a year ago, so they can be back in this situation. My uh, congratulations to Southridge, Coach Gary Duncan and his staff, and all the tremendous fans from Dubois County because they have done it all. They'll be a great representative in Indianapolis. My compliments, too, to Terre Haute South and Indiana State University, who, who hosted this tournament, did it in excellent fashion. They sure did. And, you know, you thank the fans. We thank the merchants. You know who they are, Dubois County. We were delighted to bring you the games today, and we'll be delighted to bring them next week. Started early, 9.30. We'll give you the format a little bit later throughout the week. But next week, 9.30 is the opening session. And, of course, we'll have both games and then the state championship. We hope the Southridge Raiders, the red and black from Dubois County, will be in the final game. We hope they win it. But, again, we get, this tonight, I, didn't, I expected a good game, but I thought it was a great game. And I think these kids in the other locker room, I think the Tigers, when they reflect on it, they're going to say, my gosh, we lost to a great team, and we played a great game. Well, they were beaten by an excellent team, and I'll tell you, Southridge, uh, I tip my hat to them because they had a chance to tire and use that as an excuse, but no, they, they sucked it up, they hit, hit their belt an outsider and pulled off a fine victory over a good Memorial Tiger basketball team. Well, that's our story from the Holman Center for Wayne Boldinghouse. This is Mike Blake. Thanks, everybody. Our thanks to our crew, to all of them here back at the studio, and thanks first, most of all to you watching. That's the story here, the final outcome again in the championship. Market Square, here come the Raiders again. Southridge on top, 60 to 52. From the Holman Center, Mike Blake wishing you all a very pleasant good night. Tonight's IHSAA Semi-State Championship has been brought to you live from Holman Center in Terre Haute by your station for IHSAA action, WFIE-TV Channel 14. Tonight's